Well, hello and welcome everybody to our webinar today on environmental footprint. It's now one minute past four and I hope we are more or less complete. Um, I'm here today with my colleague Francesca, so my name is Jonas and we will both guide you through this uh, webinar. Before we start, let's, let me also point out that we are recording this uh, webinar. Um, we are quite a lot of participants today, which is nice because I think it shows that there's a lot of interest in product environmental footprints and organizational environmental footprints in OpenLCA. And we hope that we can give you a good introduction to the subject today. Uh, before we start, so most of the slides will be presented by my colleague Francesca. Uh, let's take a look at the agenda today. So the focus of the webinar is on um, environmental footprints, specifically in OpenLCA and on the data set that we recently published on nexus.openlca.org. But we will also give you a short introduction into the product environmental footprint or environmental footprints uh, initiative by the European Commission in general. Um, afterwards, uh, again, the focus on the secondary data, which you can download from uh, nexus.openlca.org. Uh, we will also give you a short demonstration of the data and use advice. Uh, we will then briefly discuss opportunities uh, of the data set and also limitations. We will also well, draw a short conclusion on uh, the PEP initiative in general and also on the data set and also give you a short outlook of what is ahead. Afterwards, we have about 30 minutes for a question and answer. Um, so currently we unmuted uh, all participants because uh, otherwise we thought we would have too much background noise. But in GoToMeeting, or actually in Zoom, sorry, you have the opportunity to raise your hand. So if you open the list of participants, in the bottom right corner, there is a button uh, where you can raise your hand and you can do so. And then you, we will unmute you and you can ask your question. In addition, you can also type in the question into the chat window. We will then pick that up and uh, try to solve your question. Okay, so good, good afternoon, everybody. I am Francesca, Jonas colleague, it was saying. So I will start with the brief introduction of the, the product environmental footprint uh, project uh, from the European Commission. Uh, so basically the, the challenging aim of this project was to, to create a, a unique uh, method and approach to assess the, the, the footprint, the environmental footprint of products with a focus of, of European context, of course, and creates uh, like a homogenized data sets and also like a new uh, impact assessment method. And the focus uh, of this project were, was both on products, but also on some organizations. And here on this slide, we just provide a, also a useful link to the European Commission website uh, on which you can find a lot of uh, information about this. And like as a general overview, like as, a, as we already said, this project is from the European Commission and the duration is more or less six years. So it started in 2013 uh, with the pilot phase. And then uh, in 2016, the modeling phase started. And it, it's still ongoing because we have to, to fix some small uh, details in the, on all the output data that we provided. And as we, uh, as we said before, uh, the PATH idea was, is to create an harmonized data space for environmental footprint. And the goal is to create consistent and harmonized rules for product and also organization to assess their environmental impacts, of course, but also consistent, harmonized, and freely available background data set to, 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 uh, like, to conduct these product environmental footprints. And this is a bit uh, the, the, the process that was taken into account in the first phase of the, pro the, the environmental footprint project, so the pilot process. So the, the, in this first phase, there was a strong interaction between uh, like the European Commission, uh, like LCA consultancies and industries. So this was really a good, a good point. And so basically after the screening and all this, the discussion about this, there was a final approval of, of PEF category rules or organizational um, category rules. Um, so the, meaning that a set of rules on how to conduct PEF or OEF for 
the sectors that were involved in this uh, project. And here is a brief overview uh, on the, the product and the sector involved in the pilot phase. So like all, we are, only have two sectors, but we have a lot of product, about 30. And he, here is the a comprehensive list of sectors. And after the pilot phase, we had uh, like category rules for each uh, sectors involved and also some uh, models. So starting from what we had, we go through like an, a remodeling project uh, that has the aim to, to, to have a consistent and homogenized background data set and models also. Because like each models uh, were, or at least not each, but different groups of models came from different uh, like uh, modelers. So with this phase, we try to make everything consistent. And from the initial model, they were remodeled and make, made consistent. And then like we created different um, outputs. So we, we like from the model and in different data format that will be available soon. And as you can see from this slide, a lot of LCA consultancies were involved and this was also good because it was a great discussion about, around this. So as, a, as out, output of this overall uh, environmental footprint project, we have 75 pilot projects uh, approved. And for users, we, we will have, uh, we already have some product and organization category rules and free database and aggregated data set and also models in Excel and EILCD format. I, just to give a, a few comments on this project, of course, this was a really challenging one because it involves a lot of actors and a lot of sectors, also diverse. And it was a really positive, even if great effort. And um, like on the other side, we are still waiting for the database and the final version of database and that set that are still under review. And the actual uh, lifecycle data network is not really a network because you can download the data from different nodes, but they are not uh, really connected. So there is one node from each, different, from each provide, data provider and you have to get uh, ask, um, access to each node. Um, under a technical, uh, let's say, perspective, uh, like supplying background data is really good, but we still have not really consistent uh, background data because they, again, come from different sources, even if we we try to homogenize them and they have been uh, released um, over different time and also um, like um, let's say answering to the different version of the PATH category rules so they were not aligned in time and this of course uh, affect the, the consistency and for some uh, pilots for instance for, for paper some critical background that set were uh, missing, are still missing. Okay, so now I, I will give the floor to Jonas to, to this point. Thank you. So now a few words on the environmental footprint secondary data in OpenLCA. So that's basically the data which we uh, put online on nexus.openlca.org. Uh, Francesca already mentioned the different uh, data nodes uh, that have been set up as part of the PEF project. So the database that we offer on nexus.openlca is actually a compilation of these nodes. So what happened in the PATH project was that different data providers basically set up their own data node in the ILCD network. And uh, each data provider uh, basically provided data for a different or for a specific subject. So for those of you who work regularly with uh, LCA, uh, we'll see some familiar names, for instance, ThinkStep, Quantis, or also EcoInvent. Um, so all these data providers operate their own node, um, with one exception. The CP node is actually operated by Green Delta. And what we did was to download the data from the different nodes and to compile them in one database, which is now available on, actually temporarily it's not available, but I will get to that, uh, on nexus.openlca.org. Um, so both is possible. You can either um, access these nodes separately and you can register on the nodes and download the data there um, in the ILCD format and you can import it into OpenLCA. 
but it's um, well, you have to prepare the data, which is a bit tricky, but we will also get to that later. There's a tool for it, it's called Path Locus, and we will also give a short introduction into that tool. Um, however, much easier probably would be for you to just get this uh, compiled database, which we offer on nexus.openlsa.org. Um, maybe two remarks. One remark would be that the EF representative products are not yet available, so we will update the database uh, soon once these uh, representative products, or basically the pilots, have been updated and we will either add them to the database or we will uh, provide them for download separately. Also, the data set on textiles has not been published yet. So most of you who have worked with OpenLCA before probably know this website, nexus.openlca.org. It's basically the website which we use to distribute data, uh, free databases, but also for purchase databases. And now it also includes this uh, PATH database. Actually, I have to um, point out that the database, the PATH database is temporarily not available because we have to renegotiate uh, or rediscuss, let's say, uh, the terms of publication uh, with some of the data providers, um, but we hope to make it uh, public as soon as possible again. Uh, once that happens, you can also visit the website and you can also use it to search through data sets, uh, not only uh, the PATH database, but all databases. But if you're looking for a specific database in the PATH, uh, sorry, if you're looking for a specific data set in the PATH database, then you can just use the search field and in the menu on the left-hand side, you can filter for specific data sets. So for instance, what I did here in the screenshot was to search for a process that includes the term transport, and I also filtered for specific uh, categories. So in this case, for instance, transport services air, and also for a specific database, so this PATH database. So it's really quite a nice tool to explore um, what data sets are included in the PEP database. On the right hand side, you can see a screenshot of the navigation window in OpenLCA after the PEP database has been imported. And what you can basically see is the uh, structure or the, the um, folder structure of processes in, that are included in the PEP database in OpenLCA. Um, well, those of you who work with OpenLCA will be familiar with this view. Um, this is just the uh, um, first level of the folder structure. And if you unfold uh, the folders, you will, for instance, in energy carriers and technologies, you would find processes about uh, referring to oil-based fuels, for instance, of electricity, or also on uh, coal-based fuels or nuclear fuel supply. If you look into material production, there's agricultural production, glass and ceramics, metals and semi-metals, but also paper and cardboards. Uh, systems, for instance, includes uh, electrics and electronics. Um, but I guess best for you is just to um, get your hands on the database, import it into OpenLCA, and just browse through the folder structure yourself, or use Nexus to do the same. Together with this PATH database, also a new uh, LCIA method has been um, published. Uh, the final version 3.0 is not yet available for OpenLCA because it requires an updated data set, which is not yet available. But we have a previous version currently shipped with the PEP database, which is 1.8.9, and it's from last October. It also already includes all 16 uh, impact categories, um, but the final version has some minor improvements. We will also uh, publish them in due time. And also the method ships with uh, normalization factors and also with uh, two weighting sets. So those are the impact categories that are part of the impact assessment method. Um, well, typically what well, includes most of the, let's say, typical impact categories, which you would also know from other uh, widely used LCIA methods, such as uh, CML baseline, for instance, or another popular uh, method that has been used to put this path uh, method together is use talks, for instance. Um, some other underlying methods such as uh, aware or also the method that has been used for land use are a bit newer. And now a few words on how you can use the path database in OpenLCA and what you should uh, consider when using it. <laughs> 
So first of all, um, when you deal with this secondary data set, uh, database, you, you will find um, mainly in database um, system processes, meaning processes that include only elementary flows. But in this database, uh, these uh, system processes are not really system processes because there are, they also include some product flows um, and mainly related to recycled materials or waste that can go to recycling. And this, is, um, my, this process has been built in this way in order to make the circular, circular footprint formula applicable. So it's the formula you can apply uh, formula that is included in the path method and it, it, you, know, you can apply this to deal with like all the dif different ways and recycled materials. And since you have these peculiar processes in this data set, you have to pay attention when building a product system directly from these uh, um, from these processes or data sets. And you, you basically have to, while building the system process, you have to deselect the auto-link uh, feature that I highlighted here in the, in the slide. And uh, in order to avoid a uh, wrong link in the product system. So basically you just have a box, as you can see on the right side, without any link. But of course, if you want to take into account uh, some recycled material coming from other processes, you can do, or I suggest to manually link uh, this process, this product, this process in the product system to potential provider of this specific uh, flow. And a second important element that was already introduced by Jonas before is that when you, if you directly download the path uh, data, secondary data set from the different nodes Jonas sh showed to you before, you have to um, pre-process them before import importing them uh, in OpenLCA. And this is mainly due to the regionalized, the regionalization of uh, of flow, let's say, uh, because um, basically in the in the original data set that you download from the different nodes um, that are in the in the ILCD format, you find this uh, location element in exchanges. Then I, I will briefly show you with screenshot uh, in the next slide. And these are not directly taken into account at the moment in OpenLCA. So basically, you have to create a different flow with a specific uh, location and then import the data uh, in OpenLCA. And this, um, this operation can be done with our application that is called Path Locus. And you can find that, you can download it from this link that I put it here down, so from GitHub. And also on that page, you can find all the information about this uh, application, how to use it. And here is a screenshot from the, our GitHub page. And in the in the red box that I put here, um, I just highlighted this location element in the exchange. This is an exchange, and this is the location element. And basically, what the um, uh, path locus does is, is to create for every time a flow appear with a different location, it creates a new flow with a specific location in order to be handled in OpenLCA. And basically, why when you have to use this tool, uh, as I already said, before importing path data that you downloaded from the nodes, by using this command here um, in, the, in, the, in the command window of Windows or whatever you use. And basically, you have to recall this path locus. And the, the function you have to, to perform is map. And then in this folder, in this folder here called zip, you just put the original EALCD. Um, file and then in the same folder you put this uh, flow mapping that it's of course we provided this flow with with uh, this file sorry and that is used to map the different flows on the other hand you can also use these um, this path locus um, path locus tool when you export the data from OpenLCA and um, you basically um, want to use the exported data in other software, or for example, in this application provided by the European Commission that it's called Look at LCI, 
that check the results of your, uh, let's say, aggregated data set that you created uh, in OpenSA or in other softwares. And in this case, what you have to pay attention to is that uh, the, the function you have to, to write, I can draw out, uh, is uh, unmap. Because in this case, you are from the, deep, this, the list of different nodes with different location, you are going back to a single flow um, that can have location element in the exchange. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we have a green spot on the screen. Nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. So some limitation and opportunities in uh, OpenNCA at the moment is that uh, with this uh, dat database that we create, of course, it's nice for users because you can download uh, all the background or the majority of background data sets from one with one download. Um, these data sets are the ones used in the remodeling project. So probably there will be also a final version of this, so it's not the final one. And again, the impact method included is not the last, uh, the last um, version published by the European Commission. Um, so that there a slight difference uh, with the, the, the version three, that is the last one. But uh, we are, for the moment, we, are, uh, we cannot even include the version 3 because the background data set that we have are, are compatible with this environmental footprint impact assessment method version 1.8.9. And uh, on the other hand, like generally speaking, uh, the, data, the data sets, the FEF data sets are available from the different nodes and they can, these nodes can also be changed by the data provider and the changes are not really evident. They should not, but it, it is possible. Um, and so if you download data from a node, you can maybe find differences with the data we provided. Okay, so just to conclude, um, of course the PATH project was a challenging one and very ambitious. And so probably there were some things that could have been done in a better way. Um, on our side, the data sets and the meta will be updated and we will update you about this uh, data, data availability. And yeah, as Jonas already said, for the moment we are, we are still uh, we're discussing with the data provider the possibility to publish them. And yeah, on, on my side, it's all. Okay, thank you, Francesca. Um... Maybe just uh, two words on support and use advice. So if you have uh, questions on the PEF database in OpenLCA or on uh, OpenLCA or OpenLCA related issues in general, or maybe even on lifecycle assessment in general, we run a public support platform, which you can find under ask.openlca.org. Um, we try to provide, uh, well, questions to, uh, sorry, answers to your questions uh, as good as possible. Sometimes if we are really busy, we sometimes we cannot keep up with the questions. So we also always appreciate any community support. So you can not only ask questions as a community member, but you can also get engaged and uh, try to answer the question of other users. So we're trying to build up a, maybe a small life cycle assessment community with this platform. And we always appreciate if you uh, get engaged there. So sometimes if we cannot keep up um, with uh, answering questions. We also run a professional help desk um, and the offers for this help desk you can find on our website openlca.org. So if you're working, let's say, professionally with OpenLCA in a research project or maybe for a private company and you rely on quick and uh, comprehensive support, then you can also get a service contract with us and then you get uh, guaranteed and prioritized support via uh, our Green Delta help desk. Um, regarding uh, PATH, probably a lot of the questions that you have will already be solved if you read the EF secondary data for OpenLCA documentation, which you can find uh, on nexus.openlca.org or via the uh, link. So we will upload the slides later on and then you can just click, uh, click on the link. Um, also, we offer, of course, trainings for OpenLCA and also product environmental footprints and organizational environmental footprints uh, are part of our regular OpenLCA training. So if you're interested on that, you can also find more information on our website. And more, uh, maybe also very briefly, 
Um, this one aspect which we mentioned in the column on the left hand side, can, uh, can this, um, or could we have done this in a better way? Um, there is a blog post on the Green Delta website. So if you want to learn more about why we think that maybe uh, more could have been, or we could have gotten more out of uh, PEF, um, just read the blog post uh, from our CEO, Andreas Sirot, and then you can learn more about we are sometimes a bit critical towards PEF. Uh, just one element to, to add uh, about this blog. Um, there is a, the last version I published is from last August, and we received some uh, nice and useful feedback from the Commission. We just have to uh, include them, so a next version will uh, appear in the next week about this blog. Okay, so this is already the first part of our webinar. Um, we are quite well on time, so we thought first half an hour would be presentation and then the second part would be a question and answer. Um, I already pointed out that we muted all participants uh, so that we don't have uh, much background noise. Um, so what you can now do if you have a question, you can raise your hand in uh, the Zoom application. So if you open the list of participants, in the bottom right corner, there is a button which says uh, raise hand. And you can raise your hand, we will see this on our screen. We will unmute you and then you can uh, ask your question. Um, alternatively, there's also the chat window and we already have one question in the chat window. So you can also write down your questions in the chat window and we will try to answer them. Um, so of course we would be interested if you have any question on what we've presented in general. So any, let's say, technical question on how you can use the sec have secondary data in OpenLCA. But we would also be interested in general feedback, uh, for instance, for what you would like to use the, uh, uh, the environmental footprint data sets or what you hope to get out of the data 